Hello everyone, it's Ryan from Dark Winter Moon in Boston, and today I wanted to talk to you about setting up your very own altar. Um, to me, the altar is one of the cornerstones of my practice. Um, it's a ritual and magical space set aside for specifically the purpose of working with a particular deity or power. Um, in this case, um, the, the altar I'm going to show you is um, the altar uh, that I have dedicated for many years to Apollo, uh, bless his wisdom. And on that altar, when I show you in a moment, you will see items that I have chosen that represent that journey and that focus and that work on and with him. Having an altar sets aside a space that is dedicated just to the purpose that I was talking about. It's kind of like not only energetically speaking to the gods or powers that be, that you're serious about what you're wanting to accomplish and that you're serious about working with them, but it also sets up a sympathetic vibration within that lets you tell your deeper self, your subconscious and your higher self that um, you are serious about it. And also it creates a, a habit, a pattern. So what I mean by that is the habit or pattern is the intention that you set. So when you go before your altar, which is in the same place in your space at around the same time every day, using the same items, saying some of the same things, lighting a candle, lighting incense, for instance, ringing a bell, whatever the pattern is, whatever the habit, whatever the practice, those enhance your experience. They enhance your communication with the divine and your connection with it. Um, and that connection between your inner self and the divine. As below, so above. Those are some of my thoughts on why I think having that dedicated space for your particular work with a particular deity or power is so important. Um, it, it serves as a focus, lines everything up. So the first thing you need for an altar is a place to put it. This is one of my favorite pieces that I have. As you can see, it's got a lot of character. Um, and it works perfect. It's very trunk-like, and I say trunk-like because I'll explain what it actually is in a moment. Um, this it was a find that I got years ago when I was in Florida. I found it at Goodwill, I believe, and it's actually an antique ice chest, and I found it for $25. So, excuse the mess that I have in there, but, it, it, and it's as heavy AF, uh, but it makes a great storage and altar place for, for an altar. It's, it's been everything from my altar to the Lord and the Lady to uh, now my uh, altar for Apollo. And then one time when I was living with my best friend, uh, we actually <laughs> used it as a bench uh, at her table because we had nowhere else to put it in her house. So, um, yeah. So it makes a great place for the altar and also to store a lot of my magical things when um, when I'm moving. So we are have laid out um, some of the basic items that I like to have on my altar. These are my personal basic must-haves and I'm gonna kind of go through those and kind of tell you why I chose to have these as kind of my basics. Um, so first of all, I start with an altar cloth. Um, this is a brocade material. Um, I like pretty shiny things, so you can see here. Uh, one thing I love about brocades too is they're usually two-sided. So this one has a lovely dark blue color. And so I, I, this isn't one that I normally have on this particular altar, uh, but I like it because for a change, for one, um, it's, it reminds me of the sky. It reminds me of a sunlit sky. Um, and um, this is uh, my altar to Apollo, who is my primary patron deity. Um, so yeah, it, it seems fitting. 
then here I have a wand. This is my selenite wand um, that is um, one that I usually leave charging on his altar um, and my athame. Um, and then I usually like to have a mortar and pestle um, in case I need to grind up herbs for incense or any other work. Um, then of course a candle and a candle stand. I like to have all of those or have that on all of my altars as well. Um, a book usually, depending. I don't always have a book. Um, this is like a journal um, that's a blank paper um, that I like to take notes in that concern uh, himself, Apollo, bless his wisdom. Um, I like to have a chalice for any sort of ritual offerings or libations of the liquid sort. Um, I like to have an incense. Um, so, um, Apollo, bless his wisdom, loves uh, violet. And so it's an incense that I got for him, a stick incense. Then I like to have kind of a cauldron-like object. And um, this one is stuffed with um, kind of spells that I've done or things ritually. So one thing I really like to use a cauldron for is kind of like, for lack of a better word, my, my ritual or magical waste basket. So these are things that I'll probably burn later or otherwise dispose of. Um, and so this is a place to put them so I'm not disturbed in the middle of action, so I'm not making a mess on my altar. I have a place to put anything that needs to be ritually or magically disposed of. And then finally, some sort of disc or plate-like item. Um, this one I chose because of the arrows, which are very... and because it's golden, uh, which is uh, kind of a theme, as you can see, and also something that Apollo tends to gravitate towards. So yeah, so basically, one thing about these items is, in general, I like to include an item that represents... at least one item that represents each element. So... Ones are fire. We also have the fire candle. Um, blades are air. Uh, we also have the incense for air. Um, and then um, we also have uh, the element of earth here, uh, represented by the disc. And um, you could, of course, add in stones uh, of any kind uh, for that. And also um, the chalice uh, for water. Um, or even the cauldron. So now I have everything ready uh, to set my altar with, with the basic items I've chosen. And um, this to me is always a very meditative experience. Um, I'm very intuit intuitive about how I lay at, out the altar, how I place things and where I place them. And I just, to, to get to that place, I kind of just drop and center, kind of ground and center, kind of relax myself for a minute. Uh, maybe you'll want to start uh, with a meditation um, or, or some sort of like quiet, a few quiet moments before you get started. Um, but uh, however you want to prepare, I do recommend taking a few moments and kind of centering in yourself and your own intuition so that you can open yourself up to any sort of inspiration that comes from your own intuition or from the divine. So... With that said, I've kind of angled this so you can see the space. And, you know, obviously we're going to start by putting out the altar cloth. So, I'm really fussy about this part. Um, I'm really fussy about it all, let's be honest. So, um, I like to try to get it as centered as possible. Um, and I... Um, Usually, if you folded your cloth equally, you can tell where the center is. So I like to get it as centered as possible um, so that it's symmetrical. I love having these little flares at the side. You know, that's just my own particular uh, feelings about it. And as with most altar cloths in witchcraft, uh, there are stains on it. I feel like I'm not doing a, a very good job unless I spill candle wax or some other sort of something on <laughs> the altar cloth that stains it. So with that said, I usually like to start with the candle. In this case, um, I have this sort of plinth to put the candle stand on in the middle. Um, because I do a lot of meditation sitting on the floor in front of my altar. And so it makes more sense for it to be right in front of me when I'm doing that. This, the candle tends to be the focus of my altar um, because I use it to 
invoke the spirit of the deity or power that I am wanting to work with. And then generally I have my items laid out uh, on the floor in front of me and intuitively I'll place them where I think they, they want to go. Um, there's no logical rhyme or reason to this, um, just, just my own feelings on the matter. Um, I also personally like to leave some space in front so that I can lay out tarot cards or do other, have a little bit of workspace up front, but that's not necessary. Um, but yeah, I just intuitively place everything where I think it needs and wants to go. And sometimes I have to move it around because it doesn't all fit like I want it to. That's the general idea. Just trusting your intuition, moving things around. There's a certain aesthetic that I go with as far as like, oh, does this feel right spatially oriented with that? But that's a little, that's just me being fussy, really. But yeah, that, that's kind of the gist of what I do. And so here's our final product. So obviously there's way more on this altar than I started with as far as the basics, but I wanted to show you all uh, the just the basic setup first. Um, I've added, as you can see, a lot of things. I've added some extra stones. Um, purple and gold are the colors that always have resonated with me uh, in my journey with Apollo. Uh, so you see a lot of that. Um, I've got a lot of amethyst on there. Um, that particular stone and all of the quartz family in general are some of my favorites. Um, and I have a piece of smoked quartz um, right here and my crystal ball. And I've got these items over here. Yeah, so, oh, and then a little sphere. Um, yeah, and then some essential oils uh, right here that I like to have. Uh, again, violet is one of those essential oils. Um, yeah, and just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, all of which uh, correspond to the energy of Apollo, my intuition about that, and um, different items that, that just resonate with my work with him. All right, so that's basically the process that I go through to set up an altar. Um, it could be different for anyone. Um, it, it just really is important that you pay attention to your own intuition. Um, if you're just starting out in witchcraft or you're just starting out with an altar, I think that it could be very helpful to start with the basics that I outlined. Um, that way you have a, a clear framework to build upon. But don't be afraid to experiment or change what you're doing. Um, change the items, for instance, or kind of vary your routine until you get it figured out. You know, trust yourself. That's so, probably the, the most important advice that I could give in witchcraft uh, to anyone that, at, at any level, but especially that is just starting out. Trust yourself. Trust your intuition. You know the answers that you seek already. One other thing that I would like to mention is that I'm also creating an Instagram post that goes along with this video and there I have posted pictures of all of the altars in my house. So it's pretty fun because my roommate and I are both um, witches and so we not only have our own individual altars in our space, uh, but we have a house altar downstairs in our kind of hearth kitchen area. Um, and um, I've included pictures of all of the different altars in the house um, for you to peruse. So please check out my Instagram. It's dark.winter.moon or at dark.winter.moon. And as always, please like and subscribe, comment, ring the bell. And also, uh, as another aside, I just launched my Etsy store for my sigils on Monday. Um, I've linked the YouTube video for that right here um, and kind of telling about the start of that. Um, and I would appreciate you taking a look at that. Blessed be.